Now that I got the feed chain down on the bottom here, the last thing I have to do is mount the motor. Got it right here. And it's gonna go somewhere around here, I think. And then there'll be a chain wrapping around these gears. And to take the slack out of that chain, you have a couple options. One is to build an idler arm. That would kind of stick out. And on the return side of the chain, it just takes out the slack. Something for the chain to kind of run around. Or you can make the motor movable. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think it'd be a little easier after thinking about it. So I'm gonna build a bracket, and then I'll have some adjustment for the motor to move left or right to take out the slack in the chain. So I'm gonna build a, the bracket right now, and then we'll get it mounted to the side here. I used the plasma cutter to cut the bracket out of a piece of quarter inch sheet metal. I needed to know how far to mount the bracket away from the side of the manure spreader, so I temporarily clamped this piece to the sprocket, which let me measure the distance from the wall to the sprocket, and then I could weld some sides and a mounting plate to the bracket. I cleaned up the edges a little bit with the flat disc, and then after grinding the paint off the manure spreader, I position the bracket where I thought it would be best for the motor and then I tacked the four corners so I could test it with the motor on there and see how it lined up. One of my favorite things about metalworking is the ability to tack something temporarily uh, just to try it out and, and see how it works and if you don't like it you can cut it out of there. I bolted the motor onto the bracket in the position closest to the sprocket, the loosest position. And then I checked the alignment of the sprockets with a straight edge. And it was only about an eighth of an inch off. So I loosened the sprocket on the motor, tapped it over just a little bit, and retightened it. And it lined up really well. I did notice the chain on the bottom side will hit the mounting plate for the motor. So I grabbed the plasma cutter and cut out a notch. And then I was ready to feed the chain in and around the sprockets. There's a standard roller chain, and then there's a heavy duty roller chain. And I opted for the slightly more expensive, heavier duty version. Cause I was just thinking about the heavy load of sawdust that this chain will be pushing. And I thought it'd be worth the extra money to, to know that chain gonna be strong and holding up. Next, I moved on to mounting the flow control. A flow control reroutes a variable amount of the oil from the tractor immediately back to the tractor, bypassing the motor, and thus slowing down how fast the motor spins. The problem with the flow control is the more restricted the oil flow is to the motor, the more torque you lose. And I really think I need a lot of torque to move the heavy load of sawdust, so I'm really hoping to use the flow control as little as possible. I hope to be able to leave it wide open. But it's nice knowing that if the gear reduction in the sprockets isn't enough to slow the feed chain down to where it needs to be, I can slow down with the flow control even more. After making a template with some cardstock paper, I cut out a bracket and welded it onto the side of the spreader. And then I bolted the flow control onto it. And it was time to start hooking up the hydraulic fittings. All the fittings need to have thread dope put on them. I have a real love-hate relationship with thread dope. It works amazingly well at preventing leaks, but I'll find this stuff on my hands for a week after using it. It just gets all over the place and, and uh, doesn't come off very well. If I was a little smarter, I'd get some disposable gloves when I was doing this. When I was spinning on this elbow, I realized I didn't have the clearance to tighten it all the way. So I had to pull the whole flow control valve off again. And I threw it in the bench vise so I could spin the elbow the rest of the way on. And then I could mount it for the second time. And I was back on the dope again.
These are the long hoses that come from the remotes on the tractor. The one that pumps the oil out hooks into the bottom of the flow control where it gets split and some of it goes to the motor and some of it goes right back to the tractor. And then the return to the tractor ties into the exhaust on the flow control and the return from the motor. But I didn't really like how this hose was hooking up, having to make this bend. I thought that over time the hose would kink and be hard on it. So I decided to make another trip into town for an elbow the next morning. The last thing I wanted to do for the evening was to cut off the excess on the chain. So I grabbed the chain breaker tool. And then once I had it down to the right size, I slid the master link through and put the other side on and then snapped the clip into place. And the dumb boom mic operator forgot to turn the microphone on for this shot. I really need to fire him. The next morning, I was ready to try it for the first time. I went and grabbed our 1530 John Deere tractor and backed it up to the spreader and hooked up the hydraulic hoses. Moment of truth, let's see what happens. I always get a little nervous trying out a new modification for the first time. Never quite know what's gonna happen, but it's also kind of exciting too. It was turning, so that was a good sign. I was really happy with how slow it was moving too. I was kind of surprised. I was expecting it to be moving faster than that. This is with the flow control all the way open. It seemed like the gear reduction was just about right. It was feeding around the sprockets nicely. I was really happy with it. I thought it was going to work great once it got a load of sawdust in there. So I moved on to wrapping up the last couple of things I had to do. I wanted to cut some of this round bar and build some loops to hold the hydraulic hoses up against the side of the manure spreader. Keep it away from the PTO that's still driving the spinner in the back and uh, just keep them from dragging on the ground or getting ran over. So I grinded off the paint on the side of the spreader and welded these on. Nothing too fancy, but I thought it would work pretty good. And then I made this loop to go on the front and the center that the hoses can run through. And this will keep the, the hoses centered on the hitch when you turn, and it keeps it away from the PTO again. We have quite a few other implements with this on it, and it works really nice. And that was the last thing I had to do. I decided I wanted to put a little bit of paint on the new bare metal that I welded onto the spreader, just to keep it from rusting and probably give it a little bit of a longer life. So I went ahead and pulled off the hoses and the motor, since they were already painted and didn't want to get paint on them. Got them out of the way. And then I wiped down the metal with some paint thinner on a rag to remove any oil. And then I real quickly put down some masking tape. This is going to be very low quality paint job. I wasn't going to put too much effort into it. But I thought having a couple straight lines would look a little better keeping the new paint separate from the old paint. Before painting, I put a little grease on any threads so the paint won't stick to them and they'll still thread fine afterwards. There's no chance I was going to be able to match the old faded red paint that was already on the spreader. So I just grabbed some heavy-duty industrial black 
spray paint and give it all a couple coats. The next morning I pulled the tape off, revealing my beautiful paint job. I give it a 2 out of 10. <laughs> It'll work. And then I started sticking all the components back on. I was getting pretty fast at putting this hydraulic flow control on by this point. Fed the hoses through the loops for one last time. And then up and under along the inside of the frame. I also welded some tabs in here to hold the hoses in place. For some reason it's really satisfying to me running hoses in a clean and efficient way. And then I hooked them up to the tractor. The hoses were just a little bit too long. It's really hard figuring out how long to make them. Um, but I guess it's better that they're a little bit long than a little bit short. And I just thought a couple zip ties will work well for keeping them from dragging on the ground. And then the last thing to do was grease the bearings. This is our golden seal field here. It doesn't look like too much in the winter. It goes dormant and all the leaves fall off, but the roots stay alive and then in the spring start putting up shoots again. I grabbed your skid steer to load up some scoops of sawdust, but I got a little nervous that I might have left some tools in there, so I jumped out to check real quick and then dumped it in. I didn't want to fill it up all the way the first time. I've emptied the spreader twice now by hand with a shovel after it broke. It's not much fun. So I thought I would just put a couple scoops in there and try it and make sure everything worked all right with half a load. So that's PTO driving the spinner still. It spins pretty fast to throw the sawdust. And I can turn on the flow control to get the chain moving, and they work really well. So, the last thing to do is to give it a full load and then take it out to the field and make a pass and see how it does. It worked great. The speed of the drive chain was just about right. The pile started tapering off around halfway. And what we like to do is to do one load going one direction and then one load coming back. And it has a nice even cover the whole length of the row. So I backed it into the shed where it'll wait until we're ready to use it this spring. Thanks for watching.